Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in Evil Dead Rise. We can be a big happy family again. For this list, we're looking at references, Easter eggs, and other little details you probably missed in between screams. If you haven't seen the new installment yet, beware of evil spoilers. Is there anything else you caught? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Wrapped Up While there's technically a cabin in the woods at the beginning, this is the first movie called Evil Dead not to be primarily set in one. Rather, most of the action takes place at a rundown LA high-rise. In most of the previous films, characters have at one point either been possessed or killed by demonic trees, with vines tying up Cheryl in the first film, Bobby Joe in the second, and Mia in the 2013 remake. <laughs> Obviously, no trees around this time, but the first possession does come about in a similar fashion. As Danny plays the demonic recording, Ellie gets blindsided in the elevator while off to do laundry. The car's cables string her up, giving us a very familiar image. Number 9. Allusions to the Shining Here's Johnny! <laughs> There's one visual parallel you probably noticed, but the connections actually go a little deeper than that. Yes, the third act sees Beth and Cassie use the elevator as a last resort, which fills up with blood before dropping and spilling out on the basement floor. But if you look at the plot as a whole, there are also some thematic connections. While the complex is hardly as lavish as the Overlook Hotel, it does become an inhospitable prison when an earthquake cuts off outside help and means of escape. This serves the same function as the snowstorm in the other film. And of course, cabin fever takes hold. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Much like Jack Torrance, Ellie is a possessed parent who instantly takes to traumatizing her children. It was a perfect day, and all I could think about was how much I wanted to cut you all open and climb inside your body so that we could stay one happy family. Number 8. Swallow Your Soul There are a few quotes that call back to previous films, so let's start with the one viewers are probably most familiar with. There are more than a few household items that get turned into brutal weapons in this film, but the one that might be the most cringe-inducing is the tattoo needle. Before Ellie uses it on Bridget, she says she'll swallow her soul. This line appears in a couple of instances in Evil Dead 2 and once in Army of Darkness. In the former, it's perhaps most famously said by the deadite Henrietta Nobi, right before Ash Williams puts a shotgun in her face. Hey, I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> Swallow this. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out! Number 7 Hole in the Ground Evil Dead Rise is just the second feature film from Irish director Lee Cronin, and already he's got two solid horror outings under his belt. The first was also of the supernatural horror variety, this one called The Hole in the Ground. Now in that bog there was a hole, a rare hole, a rotten hole, hole in the bog and the bog down in the valley of... Without going into too much detail, that one does feature, yes, a hole in the ground. A sinkhole, to be precise. Knowing that, we couldn't help but chuckle when a hole in the ground becomes the instigator for this plot, too. After the kids return with pizza, an earthquake hits and rocks the building, creating a chasm in the downstairs parking lot. Danny goes down into it, finding the remnants of an old bank and ultimately the Naturam de Monto. What is this, Danny? I found it. Number 6. Dead by Dawn. That thing in the cellar is not my mother. 
While most people simply call it Evil Dead 2, the first sequel is also known as Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn. This is in reference to a series of lines Ed recites after he gets possessed by the evil. Dead by While that scene mirrors others in the franchise, whereby the first to be possessed spells doom for the other characters, the line pops up here much later in the film after most of the others are already dead. Indeed, when Beth and Cassie go out into the hall and fight Ellie, they're also greeted by all the dead neighbors. Everybody here dies by dawn, Beth. As the pair heads for the elevator, the bodies come back to life and similarly chant this mantra. Though, in this case, they're wrong. Number 5. Possessed at the End The film opens with youngsters Teresa, Caleb, and Jessica having a bad time out at a lake. But we soon learn that this takes place a day after the main story. All you can do is run. For the rest of the film, we're left wondering how it'll all connect until Jessica is revealed to be a tenant at the apartment complex. After the finale, she waltzes into the parking garage only to get a rude awakening upon seeing all the blood and viscera. Before she has time to react, we see the evil in its classic POV form as it rushes towards her and jams down her throat. While it's not really canon anymore, the first film ends similarly, as Ash gets the same greeting after stumbling out of the cabin. Number four, reading aloud. Okay, uh, let me think. Um, it's a seven. What suit? Um, diamonds. Uh, no, no, wait. Um, hearts. Oh my God, seven of hearts. You're right. <laughs> hey, Ash, I guessed the card right. Yeah, truly amazing, Linda. Speaking of the opening, the first violent interaction also recreates a moment from the first film. Not feeling the getaway, Teresa takes to reading Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. She keeps Jessica company when she's not feeling well, but things take a turn when the latter goes all deadite. Despite not being in view of the book, Jessica begins reciting a passage from the exact page Teresa is on, before losing all subtlety and scalping the poor girl. This evil creates terror through total chaos. This is a play on the first Deadite reveal from the first film. As the other characters are playing cards, Cheryl begins calling them out exactly before revealing her true form. Two spades, jack of diamonds, jack of clubs! Who knew Deadites were such good magicians? Number 3. Henrietta's Pizza Going back to Henrietta Nobi, she gets perhaps the plainest visual Easter egg in the entire film. What's going on now? Danny, go take my car and get pizza with your sisters. Sure thing, Mom. After Ellie sends the kids to get pizza so she can fill Beth in on her marital woes, they end up bringing back boxes of Henrietta's pizza. Last night, Henrietta tried to kill me. No. It's now October 1st, 4.33 p.m. Henrietta is dead. The connection is unmistakable, as this is a clear nod to Professor Nobi's wife, who was turned into a deadite after Raymond read from the Necronomicon before the events of Evil Dead 2. But because Raymond couldn't bring himself to kill her, Henrietta reappears and causes the protagonist's grief as perhaps the series' most famous deadite. We would totally try a slice from Henrietta's Pizza. Just don't read the creepy Sumerian scripture on the back of their menus. Number 2. Come Get Some Every pizza place needs a slogan, and the one for Henrietta's is Come Get Some. That might sound pretty bland, but it's actually another line callback. The end of Army of Darkness sees Ash working at S-Mart when he's once again confronted by a deadite. She, of course, says, I'll swallow your soul! But he remains confident, clapping back with, Come get some. This line has also come up a few times in the TV series Ash vs. Evil Dead. But of course, the makers of this one would be remiss not to have one of their characters say it too. You want me? I'm Ashy Slash's daughter. Come on. Come get some! After Beth's nascent mama bear instincts kick in during the climax, she utters this before taking it to the marauder creature. 
Number one, Bruce Campbell cameo. While Evil Dead Rise may technically be the first not to feature Ash Williams, it's thankfully not the first to omit Bruce Campbell. Groovy. After having a one-line post-credits cameo in the 2013 film, Campbell returns here, albeit not in a visual capacity. Rejected by the elders of our church, myself, Canon Damien Shanahan, and Father Hugo Cortez. I've been working in secret to translate the Book of the Dead's myriad writings and glyphs. When Danny starts playing the vinyl tapes that ultimately summon the evil, he listens to a priest relating to others his finding of the Naturam de Manto. While he wants to use it for good, the other priests are having none of it. At one point, one can be heard saying, it's called the Book of the Dead for a reason. Destroy it. This was said by none other than Campbell himself, but his priest character certainly has more sense than Ash. Hail to the king, baby. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.